Well boys, we are full steam ahead on the Evo 8 restoration. What do you think about that, Bean? This cat is worrying me these days. Worrying both Bobby and I. She's, uh, you know, getting old. Getting real old. She's getting fatter by the day, older by the day. Doing less things, playing with the other cat less. Look at her. Bane. Yeah, kind of sad, man. I mean, we haven't had that cat for that long, but I've actually grown to enjoy that cat. Never thought I would say I like a cat before. But anyways, Evo 8, man. I'm excited. A couple weeks ago, I think I said I wanted that car done, or I was expecting to have this Evo project finished by the new year. Today is, ooh, what is today? Today is the 15th. So I have two weeks left if I want to meet that deadline. And seeing how it took me like two, two full days just to assemble the doors and get the doors back on the car after you painted the entire thing, that might have been a little bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit, not excessive, but like, I don't know. A little crazy, I guess is the easiest way to say it. But I guess we'll see. I could be wrong. Today the car is definitely gonna make it up on the lift and start doing some undercarriage things. Get the fuel tank back in. Obviously all the brake lines, fuel lines, all that stuff has to go back in. Um, we need to do, we can technically do everything in the rear end. The rear subframe, the diff, all that stuff. All the heat shielding that goes on under there. And then, yeah. I just need that block back. The block is gonna be the main holdup. They've had it for, hmm, probably a week, I would say, maybe a little more than a week. And I asked them when I dropped it off, I'm like, yo, if I can get this thing back in two weeks, when they're usually a couple of months out, if I get it back in two weeks, I'll pay whatever you want to charge me. So we'll see. We will see. Ow, damn it, dropping. Eggshells in your eggs. It's got to be the best way to start off the day. Also, the mystery bag drop is going live. When you're watching this video, it went live yesterday, but there there might still be some available on the website. I'm not exactly sure. I think we had close to a thousand mystery bags available is what we're going for. And uh, that's a lot. So there might still be some available on the website. If there is, I'll link it down below. If not, that's absolutely crazy that you guys already sold it out and just know that I appreciate the heck out of your guys' support. And I guess it would be guys, not guys's. I appreciate the heck out of your guys' support. Would be the right way to say that. This is the official, official test on the Type R. I know you guys are sick of this, but guess what? Hmm. I almost thought the battery was so dead it wouldn't unlock. Guess who's more sick of it is me. The reason I show this kind of stuff well, number one, apparently this is just the reality of cars. And number two, this is becoming such an odd issue that maybe in the future, when you guys are gonna have a car that drains the battery with literally no parasitic draw, and one day I'll resolve the issue. I mean, it's way less. So last night we left, I'm looking at the whiteboard, 12.41, and it's at 12.32, so 0 0.09 volts is what it dropped. If I remember correctly, Bobby's dropped like 0 0.05, 0 0.06, but this has been sitting quite a bit longer. I would say another couple hours over what Bobby's car was sitting. I'm gonna say that is, I guess, fixed for now. I kind of need to do a test like, a. I mean, let's be real, the car isn't really gonna sit for a week straight, and if it does, it usually goes on the battery tender, is what I try to do with the cars. So it dropped 0 0.09 volts, and that's gotta be at least 12 hours. That's not bad. It used to be more than double that with the old battery. So, I guess that means the battery was shot. A little uh, too tight for comfort on all these cars last night.
probably find a good solid place for this hood. I would probably cry if that thing ended up getting damaged. Being that I just keep plopping her in random spots in the shop. This freaking car, man. Nice oil leak. That is a uh, very quality sealed up STI engine. I actually bought one. I found a deal on a brand new Type R A block, complete short block. So that's what that car's gonna get one of these days. It's just a brand new OEM Subaru RA motor. I know you guys have seen me assemble doors for like two days, but I came up with a new method with installing these seals. And you, some of you guys probably already know this, but if you put it in from that side like that and just push on it, it just pops right in. I was doing it the opposite way. So I'd go in like that, grab this stupid little plastic freaking trim piece here and press it in, but no, that's a waste of time. Don't do it that way. Clip it in like that first and just press it on in there. Look at that. So much easier. Also, I do have to give some appreciation to you guys. The mystery, box, mystery bag drop went live and within like six minutes, it was 50% sold out. So some of you guys are absolutely crazy on the on the site and I just wanna let you know that I really appreciate you guys' support with that company. It's mind blowing what it's grown into and I'm excited for the new year to do new exciting things. So thank you. Well, with the doors finally fully assembled, <clears throat> this thing's going on the lift for the first time since we freaking painted it and we can start doing exciting stuff. Cause let's be freaking real, man. Assembling doors, I know it's like important and all, but it's not fun. At least for you guys to watch, I would imagine. I don't mind assembling them cause working on nice cars is always fun, but as far as YouTube content, it's pretty boring. Pretty boring. Ba, 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 ba. Fenders, there's no point in installing. Hood, no point in installing. And there's no other panels to install. We could do the full interior, but I am looking forward to the underside. Ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. Why is it lifting sideways? Oh, scared me. I thought I was gonna fall. Um, okay. Could you imagine the shell falls off the lift after the billion years we put into it? It's so light. It's so light. All right, we should be good. Let's see how much under spray or over spray we got on the underside. I mean, virtually it looks like we got none. That is such a cool look. The transfer here on the back side of this panel, yellow to black. I did debate, well initially this car was gonna stay black, so that's why I did the undercoating black. And then I did debate spraying the underside yellow, like just paint matching it, but I think I'm gonna leave it black. Well, at this point, I don't think it'd be wise to try to make it yellow because that's a lot of work. And I just, I prefer black. I think black's gonna look better in the long run. Yellow might start chipping off eventually. I don't know. I'm gonna leave it black. Well, I'm sad to announce we got our first damage on the body. We have two outward dents right here. Now I know, of course, these weren't there before. We would have seen them. I'm assuming when I was putting, mm, the window fell and I'm betting the glass hit this. That would have to mean the glass is stronger than the sheet metal, which is a safe assumption. And it looks like it dented it outwards. I'm hoping that after this paint cures for maybe another couple of weeks, I'll just call out the PDR guy, have him tap that back in and we should be good. It sucks, but I think it's easily fixable. I just got a call from a shop that has something that we need. Come in. For you. 147, there's that. Have you signed that top copy? Oh, 
Perfect. Thank you, man. Yeah, you have a good one, man. You as well. See ya. Oh, boy. More zinc. More. When I say I'm trying to build the nicest evil in the world, I ain't capping. I ain't capping. 0% cap detected here. I went ahead and got the hub sections of the CV axles zinc plated, the gold to match everything else. I know factory, they're painted like this weird green color. Honestly, I don't really like it. I know this is supposed to be OEM spec, but if you can make it better than OEM, you may as well. And then all the stuff for the drive shaft, we got zinc plated. So that's gonna be sick. But let's start tackling some stuff under yonder, underneath this thing. Starting with, let's see, we need brake lines. We need fuel lines right off the bat. So all these need to go, wait, there's more. So those are the main lines that run from the front to the back of the car. There are some individual brake lines for up front and then all the stuff on the firewall. The pieces that go on the firewall, I'm not gonna do yet just because I am still undecided what we're doing with this engine bay. Being that it's a little bit different of a color, I don't know if we're gonna respray it yet or not. I haven't decided. So for now, let's just get everything else on but that. And it all has to clip together. So we have two lines that run to the rear calipers or the rear brake lines, which are the small ones here. We have the fuel feed line, which is this big one here. So this is the feed. And then we have the fuel return line. Now I know you're probably, some of you guys are probably wondering why don't I just do braided lines for the fuel? And the answer is because there's no point on this car. This thing's gonna only make five, 600 wheel, maybe. And the factory fuel lines are plenty for that. So I think the move is going to be to take our line clips, which look at that beautiful zinc plating on, and just bolt them, thread them into the body first, and then situate it from there. You know, boys, I've been neglecting this. These body panels are not safe whatsoever, just flopping around on the ground. So I'm gonna most likely like just line the shop with the fenders, with the hood, bumpers, and then stuff like the mirror caps and whatnot. That can just be packaged up some way. But uh, it'd really be a shame if we messed up these panels. This is gonna be tough. Okay, that should be safe there. Will the fender still fit? I don't like that. What else could go there? The bumper would be perfect. <sighs> this is anxiety inducing. Not to mention, we need to get to the big oven. In order to get to the oven, the Evo 4's gotta come forward. In order for the Evo 4 to come forward, these parts need to leave. That'll work well. Man, I just want to freaking assemble this thing, but having to repaint parts is not going to be fun when they get messed up. So it's better we do this now. Fender number one. Fender number two. Uh, you see why uh, I'm stressed the heck out? It's such a mess. You cannot function when it's this messy, man. It's impossible. I'm getting there. Stuff's slowly but surely getting cleaned up. This thing is just gonna be pushed to the front of the shop so that anytime we need to use the oven for powder, which we're gonna be doing a lot of as this thing goes back together, we don't have to move this car every freaking time. And I know, I've seen the comments, storing parts on this thing, it's sad, man. It really is sad. But when you have a car that's torn apart, where the heck else are you supposed to put stuff? You know what I mean?
All right, now we should have a straight shot to the oven. If I move this blinky a little bit and be able to get the rack out easily. Easily. Oh yeah, this is a game changer. Having your shop clean is a game changer. I tell you what. So we are gonna be powder coating something quite large tonight. I need to get, get it in the oven now and then we can get back on those lines. We are gonna be powder coating the fuel tank for the Voight. So I need to get it in the oven for the gas out cycle or the gas out phase. And it's a, such a big piece that it's gonna take a while I'm assuming. Now of course we can't get powder inside. I already had this thing sandblasted by a local blast shop. And uh, yeah. Too big for my blaster. So let's go ahead and mask it off and get this old girl in the oven. These things are gonna have to come off. Okay, she's fully masked off. I need to grind those painted areas real quick. I should have just pulled those rubbers off before blasting, but I didn't. So, next best thing. This girl is ready for the oven. Tank is hanging. We also have this big heat shield that goes on the bottom and then two smaller ones, two smaller heat shields. So I'm gonna do all of them at once. I'm not the biggest fan of spraying a ton of pieces at once, but we gotta get her done, man. I wanna get this tank in tonight. And it's five freaking 30. Let's hope our fuel tank it's fully evaporated, it's been a couple of weeks wide open. So let's ho hope she's fully, fully evaporated and does not blow up on us. All right, so I finally figured out where all of these clips go. Got everything in the right orientation. Now we just need to add the fuel lines to the um, system, I guess you could call it and then clip it all up and be done. Very bad habit of mine is putting lines on and not tightening them and then forgetting. Alrighty, let's pull this tank out, blow her off with some compressed air, make sure there's no uh, dirt and debris left on it and hose out some black jack from Prismatic Powders. You guys will be amazed. Well, you already know what it looks like, but if you don't know what it looks like, you will be amazed by how good it looks. How OEM it looks. It is definitely my favorite OEM looking color. All right, so on bigger pieces like this, I like to do what's called a half bake. So you put it in the oven, let it flow out just a little bit, don't fully bake it, and then you pull it back out, check it with a light, make sure you have proper full coverage on the entire piece. And then if you do, you put it back in the oven for the full bake cycle. If you don't, you fix it, and then you fully bake it. We're going for perfection here so we can't have any bare areas. Powder does kind of make it a little bit of a mess. Unfortunately, I don't have a separate spray area, so the car and all the parts kind of get dusty, but it is what it is. Okay, so I baked them for about 20 minutes. They're probably at maybe 200, I'm gonna double check. Curious what temp they're at, because of course this metal so I'm gonna say, of course, this metal is not very thick, so I'm assuming they're actually gonna heat up pretty quick. 
I want them around maybe 200 degrees, 250, 300. You don't want to fully bake them out yet. If I could get my temp, temp gun back together, that would be helpful. Oh yeah, they, uh, well, my temp gun don't work. That is a problem. We're looking at 300 degrees. Let's pull them out, make sure they're titties. And if they are, we can bake them fully. Ooh, these are gonna look good. The less time the oven's open, the less time it takes the powder coat. So being that they're warm, I'm just gonna run with, run around with the gun, hit any of the areas that uh, appear to be just a little bit dry. So the blackjack bakes at 400 degrees for 10 minutes. Once again, start the timer as soon as the part's at 400 and it's at 397. So we can go ahead and start the timer now. 10 minutes, bake these guys out, pull them out, let them cool down and see how freaking gorgeous, hopefully gorgeous they look. Hopefully we did a good job. Big pieces like that always scare me, like subframes. I've never done a fuel tank before, strut tower bars, sway bars, that kind of stuff. Always worries me that it ain't gonna look good. Clicker off, pull these guys out. And so far they look freaking amazing. That is insane. I know it's just a gas tank, but it's the best gas tank. Now I ain't no fuel tank expert, but this is definitely the nicest fuel tank I've ever seen. What do you guys think? That blackjack is very, very beautiful. I will link it down below if you would like to. If you'd like to participate in OEM style restoration, but uh, I am pretty much done for the night. I decided I'm gonna bring my beautiful female specimen of a partner on a date. So I should probably be done working. We don't ever go on dates unless it's Sunday. And even still then, especially with this build going on, it's been hard to make that happen and I, I uh, feel guilty about it, so. Let me get this thing unmasked. I would love to get it installed in the, in the car, but we still have to get all the sensors and senders and whatnot on and uh, get the heat shielding, not riveted. Yeah, riveted back on. Riveted is the word I'm looking for. But I, uh, I still feel like we made some pretty decent progress today. Biggest thing is getting the car back up on the lift. All those lines, unfortunately, took longer than I anticipated they would. And of course, when you're powder coating something this big and you gotta heat up the big oven, that's, it feels like an all day thing. As you can see, it's well worth the end result. I'm glad I did powder too. The last Evo that we did, the Hyper Blue one, I just applied the Raptor liner to it because I didn't have a big enough oven back then. And I can, Certainly say powder coat is definitely the move on a fuel tank. I figured I'd take a quick look at the Type R again. It's been sitting all day, and of course it's freaking amazingly cold out right now, so it may drop a little bit more than it should. But I'm just curious. We started the day at 12.41 volts on the stupid car, and we're at 12.2 now. So earlier I went from 12.41 to like, 12.3 something, now down to 12.2. Is that excessive? I don't know. At this point, I don't know if I care if it's excessive or not. Because it's freaking cold out, is what it is. How's it going? I was just coming to check out your oopsies Audi. My hour dent. It, yeah. You can go check it out, it's on the driver's door. Okay. You see it, right on the bottom there? Damn, all the way at the bottom? You like that? Nice. Can that be tapped in, you think, or? Yeah, it should be. How? like a rock stuck in there. No, I dropped the window when I was putting it in. Yeah. So there's nothing stuck in there. Okay, cool. I just don't know how long we should wait because this car just got painted uh, Friday. Gotcha. It's been baked multiple times in the booth, but yeah. Pretty annoyed when I saw that. I'm like, of course, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's heartbreaking, honestly. You yeah. do all that work and then you're like, dink. Yeah, just one little thing, yeah. Yeah, whenever you have time, I'm not too worried about it. 
on my nylon tools. You want to do it now? I'm already up here. All right, go ahead, man. I'll just, I only need a hammer at the top, so I'll put okay. the rest of the tools in and pull around. Easy enough. That'll work. PDR man was over at Remy's place and uh, he came and looked at the door. Easy fix, he's gonna tap it back in right quick. So we didn't gotta worry about it. Like nothing ever happened. I almost grabbed a little plastic mallet and tried to tap it back in, but uh, yeah, I would have messed it up, I bet. It worked out perfect too. Yeah. How'd Remy's car go? Uh, it was a lot of work. Yeah. It was very interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you hate when people watch you work? I'm used to it at this point. Yeah. Everybody's super intrigued by it. Yeah, it is cool to like, watch. I remember when I started, I was so intrigued. Perfect. Cool. Awesome. What about you? Well, I appreciate you uh, doing it so quickly.